Did you talk, did you uh, mute your phone? You mute your phone? Yes. Okay, cool. <laughs> amen, amen. We are live. Welcome back to the Global City of Refuge. This is my lovely wife, TC, and my name is? Hey, guys. <laughs> this is Ben. My name is Ben. <laughs> glad to have you guys today, and glad it's great to be here. Uh, just an awesome opportunity just to serve the Lord and, and serve my brethren and just to uh, strengthen you guys. And that's what apostles, prophets, evangelists, pastors, and teachers are here to do, to help you guys do the work of the ministry, to strengthen you, to edify the body of Christ, so that all we come together in love to the building up of ourselves and, you know, till we become into the statue of Christ, the perfect man. Amen. 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 I'm just, I just, you know, I was on the way here today, and just, I'm just so grateful unto the Lord because He's so faithful, He is so good, and His mercy endures forever. There is none like Him, Amen. 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 So let's just take Bless a you. brief second and just share this. Let's just share this for a moment. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Share it to your social platform as we are so that other people no matter where they are in the world can get this amen 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 we don't want to hoard the word of god to ourselves we want to share we want to share jesus we want to share his goodness we want to share his grace we want to share his love his his mercy and his kindness we want to share his wisdom we want we want to share the the word of god Amen. 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 All right. I am set. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We honor you, Holy Father. Our soul does magnify the Lord. We bless you. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul. And all that is within me, bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, O our soul. And all that is within us, bless his holy name. Yes. For he is indeed worthy. We cannot deny it. Lord, there is none like you. You are the greatest of the greatest. You are the God of gods, the King of kings, and the Lord of lords. You are the son of sons. And you are the friend of friends. And we adore you. We love you so much, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Father, for this great love that you so bountifully bestowed upon us. That when we were yet, we were yet enemies, when we were sinners, yet Christ died for us to redeem us back to you how grateful how, how profoundly appreciative that we are yes lord for you are so wonderful you're beautiful your glory is perfect in every way help us to be more like you holy spirit continue to work in us and through us and on us and sanctify us and purify us and justify us and cause us to be conformed and transformed into the image of Christ. Let the Father be glorified in the Son, and that the Son will be lifted up in and through us, that billions across the world will be saved. In Jesus' name, Holy Spirit, we yield our vessels unto you as vessels of honor, holy and acceptable unto you, that you will speak through us, that you will lead us and guide us into all truth, that you will touch our tongues with the coals of fire, that we will speak with love, clarity, and passion for you. That we will give the simplicity of the gospel. And that many lives will be changed and translated and transformed thereby. In Jesus' name, Spirit of grace, Thank give Jesus. us more grace. Strengthen us with might by your spirit in our inner man. Quicken our mortal bodies. Give us boldness that we may preach your word as we ought. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. 
in the name of Yeshua HaMashiach. We love you, O wonderful Father. Amen. 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 So we're going to be picking up where we left off last week. And, um, but we're going to just backtrack just a little bit to reemphasize a truth, the reality of what is to, what is to come. We're going to see how God has and is turning the tables. Man, how, how good does that sound that when the enemy was, had his, you know, had you and had us in a, a disadvantaged situation, when the enemy had us pinned down, the enemy had us locked down, surrounded. But lo and behold, the whole time, the Lord had already turned the tables. Just like with Elisha's servant, all he saw was the enemy doing. He saw that they were surrounded by the adversary. But he didn't know that God had already turned the tables. So I praise God for that. Because that which has tried to destroy us shall certainly be destroyed. And that which hath tried to kill us will certainly enter into eternal death itself. But for us, as for us who serve the Lord, who love the Lord, like, like Paul said, those who look forward to his appearing and love his appearing, to us, we have life everlasting eternal that will never come to an end but God has turned the tables on those who are now currently immortal those who are currently immortal our adversary the devil the serpent the dragon whatever folk want to call them you know uh, Satan Lucifer for the time being is immortal and we, where we are right now, we are mortal. For the time being, we are mortal. So I'm going to just go over, you know, just a few scriptures from last week. Because I want everybody to understand this. Because this gives us hope and praise in our Lord Jesus Christ. That no one is getting away with anything that he is our avenger and he will take vengeance for us then give us power to judge those who try to annihilate us yeah i do want to add that you know even though we are mortal meaning that we we have a time frame there's a time period where this time our time on earth will end however i don't want us to look at being mortal as being um subject to this world right or like we're less than those who are immortal because we're not right once we receive jesus and we have the holy spirit in us we transcend this natural world amen and we begin to walk in a supernatural world which actually it uh, it d there's no limitations for us right is what I'm, I'm saying and I what I want to get through to you guys that we cannot limit ourselves to this mortal body to this natural world because we are far beyond it. Right, to this natural realm. Yeah. Because who you are, and I, and I love saying this, and I always say it with such passion, who you are is so great and so powerful. I just noticed those braids in your hair. <laughs> they look nice. I just noticed it. <laughs> Praise the Lord. <laughs> See, that's my mortality. That's my human nature. Amen. Amen. And I, and I love you're here. It's got the curly cues going on. Amen. It was <laughs> all natural. <laughs> you know. Is that my sister right there? Hey. Hey. 
Amen. 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 Look, 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 I'm happy to see all you guys. And, you know, I just, just, we just want y'all to be built up to understand. You, you, you can't be built up without knowledge, without the truth. A lot of people are puffed up and built up based upon a lie, but the lie is temporal. The truth is eternal. Yeah. You can never, ever, ever change the truth. And the truth is for each and every one of us, both here and abroad in Christ, that we are powerful. We have more powerful than the enemy. We have more powerful than the armies of this world living inside of us because he who is inside of us created everything in this world. And if we would just believe him and trust him, if we would just say, you know what, Lord, you know more than me, you're stronger than me, you're greater than me, everything better than me in every way, I trust you. Can somebody just tell God those three <laughs> words, I trust you. I trust you. I trust you. I, you know what? I blame movies. I blame movies. I blame sci-fi TV shows because it, it comes across as something that's false or fake. We're supernatural beings. So at, for so long, after you know, you're watching the Avengers and stuff like that, and it's like, oh, yeah, you know, superheroes, you know, that's, that's, that's something that I could never do. I would like to. Who would love to have x-ray vision? Right. Who, who would like to be able to heal somebody? Amen. Th this is not far-fetched, guys. The gift of discerning of spirits that I have, I literally have x-ray vision. I can see in someone, and, and the Lord is showing me what is going on inside of them. That's supposedly, you know, superhero stuff. Right. And I'm going to give you a testimony of that. Years and years ago, probably about maybe at least 12 years ago, one Sunday morning, that's when we had service in, in the house. And... Uh, I mean, it was just like my, my chest was so heavy and compressed. It was hard for me to breathe. I mean, it was like I, I, I just was coughing. <coughs> my, my, my chest was just, I didn't know what was going on. And then, uh, you know, so I, I still got prepared, ready for service. And I was sitting in the living room when I believe her and Marissa came in. And, it, and then uh, uh, Tina, she was like, she said, I see something red in your chest. And she said, uh, the Lord wants me to pray for you. She didn't know. No one knew what I was going through in my chest. But she said, I see something red happening in your chest. And she, she prayed for me. Well, they all prayed for me. But Tina led it because she saw it. And she began to rebuke whatever was going on in my chest and decree healing over me. And all of a sudden, all this stuff started coming out my mouth. Whatever it was that was attacking me, she saw it, and I was delivered from it. And that was something that the Lord had first showed me in a dream, that I was, he was going to open up this gift to be able to do that. And I was like, okay, <laughs> what? Like, that's that old Superman stuff. Like, that's not real, is it? It is real, cause sure enough, when I when we came over and I I just looked at him and I saw it, right. just like if you were looking at an X-ray, and I was like, how is this possible? <laughs> but it's God, so that's you know that that's part of who He is, His gifts that He bestows to us, but we we have to get out of the mindset of thinking. Uh, one note right? because it hinders that's why he says humble yourself like these little ones like these children why because they have a big imagination right and it's not even so much the imagination it's just the possibilities are endless they are not limited and capped to their life choices and experiences because they just got here 
So they're like, I don't know, I'm game for anything. So that's how that's the mentality that we need to have because guess what? That's the mentality that I was like, okay, Lord, after so many times of him saying I'm going to do something and me like, mm, I don't I don't believe you. And then he do it. I was like, okay, well, shoot. Okay. Whatever you want to <coughs> do. And I mean, just began to see amazing things happen working through me why because now i had humbled myself as a little one because i don't know anything but lord if you say that i can walk through this wall then i'm gonna do it type thing right because the awesome thing about this thing is that we have immortal beings that are against us and we have immortal beings that are fighting for us and with us speaking of the angels the f then, the, then we war against the, war the fallen angels and demonic spirits, which are two different things. And uh, so, but the awesome thing that God did was he empowered mortals to defeat immortals. Amen. He, he, he gave mortals power over immortals that the world think is the po most powerful. Yeah. Jesus said, I give you power over all the power of the enemy. You shall trample snakes, which is witchcraft, and scorpions, which are demons, and they shall no wise hurt you. The only thing that invites it, the enemy to really hurt us, and that word hurt means to cause damage, not just you feel a little pain. It's, not, it's fear. But you are a mortal being with supernatural power through Christ Jesus by the Holy Spirit. That's why he told the, uh, the apostles. He said, you wait in Jerusalem until the promise of the Father come, where you will be endued, endowed with power. The word power in the Greek is dunamis, explosiveness from on high. So whatever the enemy is trying to do against us, we come together against other folks and pray we blow his whole plan up. Amen. That's why the Bible tells us to be strong in the Lord and in the power of his, the power, the dunamis of his might. And there's also a power that, that is like an energy. It's like, you know, you know, how, um, you, you, you look at Superman, his eyes get red and beams come out. That's energy. That's energy. We have the, both the dunamis and the energy of God. In the Jesus of God. In other words, we have the power of the Holy Spirit in us. All things are possible for those who believe. So these mortal people, we are mortal men and women, mortal men, giving power over those who are immortal. And what do you think they get all these superhero, uh, you know, scenarios ideas, from and ideas? Concepts, and, right. right. Because it's reality. It's reality. But they don't want you walking in it. Right. They don't want you to know that you can through Jesus Christ. Right. Listen, if you look at the supernatural things of the Bible, it's just crazy. Floating axe heads, axe head, heavy axe head at the bottom of the river, and then it floats up to the top for, for the prophet to get it. Waters splitting. You talk about Joshua saying, uh, as surely as as surely as the live Lord lives, as I say, it so it won't rain. I mean that's what Elijah said, but then he, he, let me watch this. Then Joshua said, The sun won't go down until we kick these enemy tails. And the sun stood still for over twenty four hours. And guess what? They can find that spot when they look back in history. Through through uh, 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 astrological research, it's been known that there's a day missing. <laughs> so you talk about mortal men doing supernatural things, healing the sick, casting out devils, supernatural, because mo most of those things are perpetuated and instigated by an immortal. But you, as an immortal, can rebuke an immortal. And that immortal has to subject themselves to a mortal. What did the disciples say? 
Lord Jesus, even the devils are subject to us in your name. But he said, don't rejoice about that. Rejoice because you are a citizen of heaven. Your name is written in heaven. Yeah. So, so this is just the byproduct of our name being written in heaven. This is not something for us to glory in or glory over. It's something that Jesus get glory of because the world will know that he's alive. But we glory that, listen, we, we're in this warfare, not for ourselves, we won, but to help those who are on the losing side. And to help those that don't know they won, but they have a concept in their mind, a construct in their psyche that I'm losing. You are not losing. So we're talking about, uh, we're going to cover a little bit toward the end of last week right now. We're talking about uh, the, uh, the immortals becoming mortal. The immortals becoming mortal. Then we're going to talk about the mortals becoming immortal. God is turning the tables. So I'm, I'm going to just go through it real quick. Go back and listen to it last week if you want to hear it again in, in detail or if you hadn't heard it. Go back and listen to it from last week. Psalms 82, 6, and 7. God said, have I said, I have said, you are gods, and all of you are the children of the Most High. Angels in the Old Testament is called Benah Elohim, which is sons of God. So in creation, we're all sons of God. But you shall die like men and fall like one of these princes. So you have God talking to the angels that have fallen because they have become gods in huma over humanity. And he said unto them, you are gods, but you will die like men. Is a man mortal or immortal? Mortal. So you are immortal. You are God, but you will die like a mortal. Now, an immortal has no concept of actually what it will feel like to die. Can you imagine how much that frightens them to know that they, they were once beings that would live in eternal life, but now they're subject to death? Hmm. Isaiah 14, verse 12 to 16. God said, How art thou fallen from heaven, O Lucifer? Son of the morning, how art thou cut down to the ground, which did weaken the nation? So you were cut, you fell from heaven, you was cut down from the, to the ground, and you weakened the nations. For you have said in your heart, that's why you got to be careful being consumed with self-centeredness and your own way and your own will is Luciferian for your life to be about you and only you. For yeah. thou hast said in thy, you can say something? Okay. Thou hast said in thine heart, I will ascend into heaven. I will exalt my throne above the stars of God. I will sit also upon the mount of the congregation and the sides of the north. I will ascend above the heights of the clouds. When he's talking about the clouds, not the clouds of the glory, the clouds of the sky, he's talking about the glory. I will be like the most high. So in other words, he wanted to elevate himself to be like God, and in order to overthrow God, you had to be at least on his level. So his whole plan was to usurp God, to become God, to become greater than the creator. The creature will never, ever become greater than the creator. That's why Jesus said you could be as your Lord, but not greater than your Lord. We could be like him, and, 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 and see... And that's what made Satan so, so when he was Lucifer, so jealous because God made us like him in his image and after his likeness. But here you see, he says, I will be like the most high. But he will never and could never ever be like the most high because he wasn't created to be that way. But we were. We were created to be like God. We was created to be in his image and to be like him. That's why the Bible tells us that the father wants us conformed to the image of his son. He wants us to be like Jesus. The word Christian means follower of the, of, of the Christ and to be like Christ. But when we make ourselves about ourselves, then we become like the immortal ones that will become mortal. And even just look, reading this scripture, mm -hmm. Isaiah, and listening to Satan, you know, back when he was Lucifer, listing all of these things that he's going to do, you know, how often do we do that? You know, oh, I'm going to do that. I, I, that was me. Like, okay, by 23, 
I'm gonna be I'm gonna be f- finished with college. I'm gonna get married. I'm gonna have three kids. Like just listing out everything I'm gonna do. But what did Jesus do? He's our example. He said, "Not my will, Father, but Your will be done." You see the difference? Like we're 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 so set on I'm gonna do this. I'm gonna do that. I'm gonna accomplish this. But what is the will of the Father for us? Right. Do we ask God, what, what is your will for my life? Because we end up spinning our wheels for, you know, Years. 10, 20, 30, 40. Some people never get to the place to do the will of the Father, to actually perform the task that God created us to. Yeah. It's no problem making a plan. Yeah. But put it in pencil and say, Lord, if it be your will, just like Paul said, you know, don't say I'm going to do this tomorrow, but say if it be your will for me to do this tomorrow. Because when we get caught up in I will, I will, I will, we put ourselves under a different du- jurisdiction. And then if it's going to take us away from God, the devil will help it. Right. Because if it's that desire to do this thing, then it's not going to matter who or what. You got to get this thing. That's not good. Right. And if that desire is greater than your desire for God. Yeah. Oh, the devil will really help you. Yeah. He'll even probably throw you a million to get you started off with. But in a couple years, you're on the street homeless or on drugs or ready to commit suicide because nothing the devil gives is without curse and damnation added to it. God bless you. Bless you. So, but watch this. He said, I would be like the most high. And, And this is what God said to him. But yet... But you shall, but yet you shall be brought down to hell, to the sides of the pit. And they that see you shall narrowly look upon you. As I was saying next week, last week. When we look at him, we're going to be like this. Like. Wait a minute. You, do you see? It, is this the one? It's, well, that's what the scripture said. When we, we look narrowly upon him and consider him, s- consider Lucifer, consider Satan, cons- consider the devil, the serpent. It's saying, is this the what? Man. It didn't say, is this the immortal? When that day come, we're going to look at him like a man and say, is this the man? that made the earth to tremble, that did shake kingdoms. Everybody that's going into the lake of fire going to look at Satan and say, I, I follow you, you're not here. <laughs> oh, my goodness, Lord, is there ever forgiveness for me? For it is written. Oh, my gosh. Wait to hear it at the end. The whole creation of man an animal and beast will look at Satan and say, is this, is, did I give up this for th- this? Listen, people, don't make that mistake. He's a deceiver. And right now he, he lives an immortal life, but his Im- immortality is turning to mortality. Is this the man? Revelation 12, 12 tells us his time is short. A being that lives outside of time now has but a short time. And us who live and have a short time will live outside of time forevermore. God is turning the tables. I want you guys to have hope. The Lord wants you to have hope. Even through the trials of tribulation, the suffering that you're going through, have hope because this here, what you're going through, is for a short time. And he will bless you on this earth, give you joy and peace on this earth, and forever in the world to come. Amen. In the world that already is, that we can't see, that we can't go to yet. Rejoice that we have the opportunity to suffer for Jesus, to go through in this world for Jesus, that can reach, we go through hell so that we can reach people that's going to hell. 
so we can tell them about Jesus. The enemy might try to attack you in a certain way. And you might have to go to see a doctor, but right in that doctor's office. Let me tell you something. Jesus loves you. And they start crying. You go in the middle of the Lord. All that was just so you can get to somebody. The devil will try to make it evil for you. Evil means destructive. He tried to destroy you. But God will turn everything that the enemy will try to do against you into good. Amen. He can't outwit God. He can't outthink God. He can't outstrategize God. He's so self-deceived that he doesn't even realize that those that follow him, fallen angels, demonic spirits, and fallen man follow him, not even knowing that they think they're fighting against God, but they're working according to his will because the Bible says that God created the wicked for the day of evil. So somebody got to choose to be wicked. If that's what you choose, that's on you. He's not making you wicked. It's your choice. Do you want to choose the, the, the tree of life or you want to choose the tree of the knowledge of good and evil? Do you want to choose righteousness? Do you want to choose wickedness? You want to choose to be just or you want to choose to be unjust? So if you choose to be unjust, okay, you fit in this category where the wicked is because the wicked will be used by me so that I might be glorified and that my children might be saved and delivered. But as for the wicked, because that's what you chose, then you're going to go where I made, the place that I made for the devil and his angels. It wasn't made for us, but we can choose that or we can choose eternal life. We can choose to go from immortal to uh, immortal to immortality or we can choose to go... <laughs> To from mortal to even worse than mortal, eternal damnation. Lower than mortal, eternal damnation. We can help people. We can believe this Jesus that, that, that is real, that is alive. We can believe this gospel that has saved our souls. We can go tell other people that they might believe, that they might be saved. Um, I went to the eye doctor the other day, Saturday, Friday. And then after my wife and I, we went to Buffalo Wild Wings. And there was this waitress there. She was really nice. And I said to her, uh, she was like, you need, y'all, you guys need anything else? I said, can I ask you a question? And she was like, sure, how can I help you? I said, do you have any idea, any idea at all? And she was looking at me like, like, waiting to answer my question. How much Jesus truly loves you? And she was like, what did he say? I said, how much Jesus truly loved you? And she put her head back. And she said, I needed that so much today. She said, I needed to hear that so much today. And just start, we just start ministering to her. And she's like, God is really using y'all. Because she knew of Christ. So we, we end up praying for her. And she gave her life back to Jesus right there in the restaurant. Right there in the restaurant. This Now this mortal has the hope of becoming an immortal. Living forever and ever, ever without end. In paradise, not just living in you. you like, oh, man, I'm lost. It's these woods kind of dark and gloomy. And, or, oh, bird, get away from me. Bees, flies, up. no. And, and glory forever. In paradise forever. Where the trees are alive, you go to pick a tree and a tree branch come down to you so you can reach the fruit. Where the flowers are singing to you. Where the grass is waving at you. The water is alive. Everything is alive as it was before Adam fell. This is the hope that we have. This is the joy that we have. This is the reality that defeats this virtual reality we live in that will last forever. That's very true. Just thinking about it as you were talking, it, there was no death. And like I was thinking about the vision that the Lord showed me of myself, seeing myself through his eyes, basically. And my hair was alive. It was like moving. It wasn't just the wind blowing it. It was like literally moving and it was alive. And I always thought that was weird, but that makes sense. There's no death in heaven. There's nothing dead. There's nothing dead. Everything is alive. God's throne, like I said before, is alive. Everything is alive. 
That's how it was in this world. Everything was alive unto the curse. Your hair was alive unto the curse. Now your hair is dead. Everything. Go ahead. Um, when you said, um, we talk about like rejoicing when you even get like persecuted for Christ, or in and then on top of that, you said like, you know, like knowing that all this won't last long. That reminded me of when like the pandemic was like super super heavy, and you know, for me in the career that I was in, you either had two choices: you either had be vaccinated or unvaccinated. And so I remember those were the choices for everybody. Yes. Yeah, <laughs> but but for. <laughs> But now, for this industry, it was like you either vaccinated or you'd be put to death. Yeah. That's, that's, that's kind of like what it was. Yeah, that is how they uh, <laughs> And um, right, it was sure enough a death to your career if you weren't vaccinated. Yeah. yeah. And so um, I remember like going on the website about to book my appointment and everything. And I just felt the Lord just like, no, no, no. I'm just like why like i just want to be like everybody else <laughs> and don't have money you know what like he just said no so i was like okay cool and i remember just being like really really depressed about it because after that it just seemed like it was it just got bad like it was it got so bad people well, at first i would like go to go to fly, actually fly to cities and they wouldn't even allow me on set they would tell me that if I go to set, I would have to stand outside and stand in like a squ- a boxed off like area with double mask on. And then I just told them, I was like, well, I'm not doing that. Y'all must not know who I am. I ain't doing it. I ain't say I must not know who I am, but I just told them, I'm like, I'm not coming. So <laughs> I'll be, I'll be, I'll be. Let's I'll all be. remain <laughs> humble, guys. <laughs> but I was just like, no, nah, I'm not doing it. I'm, I'm going to just stay in my hotel. Like, I'm not, is it? Though it was in Miami in the summer, I was like, I'm not standing outside. Like, no. And so, um, a lot of things happened after that. Then it got to a point where they were just like, you know what, just don't come to the shoot. So I was just like, stay home while my business partner just like traveling. And those are like very, very hard moments because I'm used to being like in in the thick of it. You know, we're used to like just being together, like nailing out these jobs and stuff. And so, as like time went on. And I remember, like, the Lord saying, like, this, this is not going to last long. I remember reading stuff, and y'all were encouraging that this, this is not, not going to last long. Mm-hmm. Um, and, of course, like, people would ask why. And, you know, my answer was, like, my answer was always, the Lord told me not to do it. You know, I'm not about to question why. I, 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 he told me not to do it. But I, he told me not to do it. And that's what I'm listening to. Like, I can't, I'm not about to feel peer pressured into doing something because, because, like, what if, let's say, God forbid that I do get injured or something like that. Then what y'all gonna say? Well, you you your own person. You should have you shouldn't have did it. So no, I'm not. <laughs> right. I'm about to listen to the one that created me, who knows my body, who knows how it works. And that's what I chose to listen to. And you know, eventually, it just seemed like everybody forgot because now they don't even require a mask no more. We were just on the set where somebody was immunocompromised on set. And so when we they came on, we put our mask on. They was like, I mean, got to. I was like, I was like oh. <laughs> right. so it's, and so now it's been crazy because, like, things have been coming out in news articles and stuff like that. that like, the COVID death numbers were inflated. There were people who just happened to have COVID when they died and didn't die. Cause, like, all these, all these, like, different things are coming out. Motorcycle Some that, accidents, car accidents. COVID, COVID, COVID. Yeah. The doctors got paid more money to say that a death was COVID. Go ahead. Yeah, and all these articles are on, on, like, CNN, but, of course, like, they're not going to be promoted because it's just, like, it's part of the agenda. Know. But um, it didn't it didn't last long. And now we're looking back on it. I mean, my business partner, like, this is all stupid. And I've had, I've actually had, like, people come and apologize and be like, look, I, I would have allowed you on set like this. I don't care who or what you are or what you've done. They were just like, you know, um, that's just a policy. I wish we didn't have to enforce it, you know. But I, I want. They just came to me it's like I really want to apologize to you, yeah, for those things. Because so it's it coming from the top. And even yeah. uh, recently, Ice Cube came out and was saying the same exact thing. Like he w- he didn't get it. So now all these these jobs are being shut down. But he's standing his ground. But they don't publicize that. So in the midst of it, you felt like you were alone in that. And so we had to try and encourage you and be like, don't worry, it's not going to last long. But, you know, you stand your ground, stand mm-hmm. for what, you are, what you're what you doing. The Lord is still good because you guys were still able to work at least. 
right. you know, yeah. but, you know, you stand your ground in that. Yeah. And it's just unfortunate that that platform wasn't there for you guys who didn't do it to to be able to say, hey, I didn't do it either. It's okay to yeah. give that encouragement. So, yeah. But I mean, the quiet as it's kept, y'all ain't here for me. <laughs> There's a lot of people who didn't do it. That's what and I'm they, saying. And they just have call, they just have like the fake mm. the, f- the fake cards. Quiet, y'all ain't here for me. <laughs> right. But 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 he was like, should I do one of these calls? I said no, because it's deception. You have to stand. Yeah. You have to stand in truth. You know. But a lot of people see. Let me tell you. Let me tell you. It, that whole thing was beta tested. Let me tell you what it's about. Fear and forcing people to take an injection. That's how they're gonna do it to market the bees. It's gonna be fear based. Yeah. You can't buy or eat or sell. Right. Unless you take the mark. I'm telling you, I ain't saying that th- it was the mark. It's a beta testing of the mark. So, um, because the enemy knows. So, so even with the mark, and we weren't even intending going this way, even with the mark of the beast, it's supposed to be just like even Elon Musk now is developing a chip to put in the, grain that'll, in the brain that'll deal with every illness of the body. So, that's going to be all these little different things are parts of the mark of the beast. So right. they're gonna tell you that you you're immortal now. You can't die. Right, they but that's that's the point. It it changes who you are. Right. It changes who you are, and that's why the Bible says that if a person takes the mark of the beast, then they're eternally lost because you're not not you're now not who God or what God created. So it's things inside of that technology that alters the genome. Right. You know, and they and that's why even with the 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 vac it was just like the uh what is it r m what is it r n r n a no it's not r n a what is it m n r a m r n a m r n a right it does swing to the genome to the yeah. cell you know so that's why a lot of people get clots they bleeding out you know one person actually bled out to death why because what they're doing is not just beta testing but they're testing, they're using humans as test pigs or guinea pigs to perfect this mark. So then they're going to say that, okay, now you won't get sick anymore. And you won't die. But then the Re- book of Revelations tells us that because, you know, they said people would, would seek death and death would flee from them. <laughs> but their soul is eternally damned. So... Let me talk to you people about some real things that's going on behind the scenes. Just like even now, a lot of the rappers, the uh, you know, the high people in the high echelons of the industry, Hollywood and all that stuff, they drank this stuff called adrenochrome, which is which is blood to give them they they said they found the fountain of youth. It's their fountain of youth. When they stop taking it, you see how they begin to grow old again. It's demonic. It's a demonic deception to make them think they're getting younger, but it's just a demonic spirit manipulating their flesh and their body to appear to be younger. Why? Because everybody is in search for immortality. But Jesus is the only way. Mm -hmm. He's taking us from mortality back to immortality. Why did I say back to immortality? Because as we were talking about last week, and we just alluded to just a few minutes ago, when Adam and Eve was created, they were immortals until the, f- until the fall, until the sin. Then they fell just like Satan fell. Satan was the first one to fall. So they fell from immortality to mortality. And that's why he said, the day that you eat it, you'll surely die. There was no death before he ate of the tree. They were immortal. And then he said an angel at the, at the gate of the Garden of Eden, and he said they would not eat of the tree of life unless they, unless they live an immortal life in what? In sin. So that's why the angel guarded the tree of life. The tree of life is now in heaven. And so man is searching for that tree of life, but it's not here on earth. So they're finding other ways to try to live forever, but the only way to the tree of life is to go through the tree of life whose name is Jesus Christ. 
So we're going from mortal to immortal. If you're online and you have a question or comment, please feel free to put it in. We'll read it live and answer it or just uh, acknowledge your, your comment. 2 Corinthians 5, verse 1. 2 Corinthians 5, verse 1. For we know that if our earthly house of this tabernacle were dissolved, talking about these bodies, we have a building of God, a house not made with man's hands, eternal in heaven. For in this we groan, earnestly desiring to be clothed upon with our house which is from heaven so our house is talking about our bodies that's we want to be immortal we want to be eternal then it says here if so be that being clothed we shall not be found naked and for we that are in this tabernacle do groan us who are in these bodies we do groan us who is in this body that lives in this flesh, we, we are burdened. Not for that we would be unclothed, but clothed upon that mortality, which is a liability to death, might be swallowed up of life. Now, can, 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 can I ask you a question here? Living in this body, do you groan? Yeah. Do you do you get a headache and get oh my goodness, stomach get mm. mm -hmm. or your heart hurt and you just say mm. in this body we groan. I was talking to my wife this morning because I I I, I really didn't get a lot of sleep last night. And just in my spirit, just the whole, almost the whole night, I was singing this one song by Donna McClurkin, I Trust You, Lord. And I would just weep. And I would just say, Lord, I trust you. Lord, I trust you. No matter what I went through, no matter what I'm going through, I say, Lord, I trust you. You've been there for me. And I was talking to my wife because I was just like, I'm like going through my whole life. I like the, the young man of God was saying, just reflect back on what God has done. And I was talking to her on the way here in the car, and I just started weeping. I was just like, Lord, how many times have I, have I groaned in my life? How many times was I, was I burdened in my life? I was young, I don't know, er, I don't know, maybe five, six, seven, I don't realize. My mother, pity, many people don't know, she was adopted. And her adopted mother was my grandmother. And I don't remember her very well, but I remember that we were close. And I remember that she had passed away. And I remember that I would just, know, I knew, I don't know how old I was, but I knew that she was dead and I would never see her again. And I would just cry and cry and cry. And especially when this one song came on, I don't know how I correlated the two, but it was a song back in the day that said it was a sad day when Toby went away. And it would talk about a death of a loved one. And every time for years after that, even when I was like, you know, a teenager, that song came on, I would cry. Just groaning, groaning, groaning in my spirit, growing, groaning in my body, growing, groaning and groaning. And then my mom passes away, and I'm like 15 years old. That's why, you know, I, I, I hate disease. When I was young, I told God, I said, God, when I grow up, I want to fight the devil. My mom said, you just might. And I was like, shoot, what did I just say? But when she died from cancer, I had such a hatred for sickness and cancer. And God blessed us to be able to pray for people and be healed of cancer, and God healed them. But when my mom died, I was just so, let me, let me go back to my grandma. I remember crying so much. And I know you guys heard this testimony before. 
when in the middle of the night I, 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 I lift my head up and there was a man standing at the foot of my bed in the glow. And it scared the crap out of me as I put my hand in the cover and tried to act like I was asleep. When my mom died. Guess who was there? When my grandmother died, when I was just a small child, my adopted grandmother, Jesus walked in the room. When my mother died, Jesus walked in the room. When I lost everything and everyone left me, Jesus, when I went to the mountain, Jesus walked in the room. When my grandmother, my grandfather, on my father's side passed, Jesus was there. Jesus was there. When my, when my blood pressure went up to 256, Jesus was there. When my blood sugar was taken up to 800, I said taken up to 800 for a reason, Jesus was there. When that wall fell on my back and I was partially paralyzed on my left side, Jesus was there to tell me why. I'm not special, y'all. I'm just want to let you know when you in when you in this tabernacle, we're gonna groan. And the, the Lord wants me to tell you guys that when you're groaning, allow him to be there. He wants to be there. He's here all the time, but sometimes we just go through what we go through emotionally, psychologically, burdened with all these things, and we pray no attention that he's right there. He's right here. He wants to be here. We're mortal. We need him. He's immortal. Immortal. He loves us. Allow him to be there for you in times of groaning and burden, being burdened. Burdened. In any kind of way, whether it's with money, whether it's people, family, a job, no matter what it is, know that he's there. Well, I've never seen him because you've been because he wants you to know that he's there. So by faith, believe that he's there and you will see him. He'll let you know that he's there. Well, there's a spirit of peace that came in. That's what happened when my mom died. That peace of God just came. It just feel. I never knew any in love. I never knew anything like that. He knows that we are mortal, that we are but flesh. He knows. Allow him, the love of our soul, our Savior, our Creator, our God, allow him to be there with us in our mortality. Um, I, I totally forgot that this, y you asked us earlier, how was our night? And I'm just thinking, oh, it was fine. My night was fine. I, you know, I, I know you said that you were going through last night. And I totally forgot. Until you were just talking there, the Lord just reminded me what actually happened last night. And I woke up in the middle of the night, and there was a hooded figure in the corner, in the corner of the room. And you were laying, yeah, and you were laying next to me, of course, and you were asleep. And I had the thought to wake you up so we could both pray and rebuke it, but I believe the Holy Spirit said, let him sleep, I'm with you. And so I began to pray and rebuke the hooded spirit. And I looked over at you because, like I said, I was going to wake you up. And I saw that something, someone was standing next to you, over you. And so I began to rebuke him as well. And so the, the hooded figure in the corner, as when I started to pray to rebuke him and then him, he started, I saw he was like, throwing something at me like powers I don't know what he was trying to do but as I was praying I began to pray in the spirit I be began to pray in tongues and I saw like literally this um, I don't know how to explain it like it was like a force field that came up in between me well in between 
it was like at the edge of our bed and between the the guy and the hood and as he was throwing things at me these powers or whatnot and it could not penetrate that invi- it looked invisible it looked almost like water like it it was kind of like ripply whatnot but i noticed like whatever he was trying to throw at me it wasn't getting through and so then i focused my attention to the guy that had astral projected and i don't know what he was trying to do so i began to rebuke him and then finally everything left so um but uh, what is it a tuesday okay no it was this it was sunday morning but this is the type of things that are going on in the spirit that you know (laughs) you could say seems like a movie but this is just our life and i'm just able to see what's happening the lord is allowing me to see what is actually going on because and i just totally forgot about it but you know i was uh you know we were driving here or no when we got here and you were saying well, i guess both you were saying you had a rough night and you know you you would fall asleep a little bit you'd wake up you were kind of in pain and totally forgot about that amen but i don't know exactly what time that was i didn't look at the clock i went straight back to sleep after that like you know right. so amen because even what i was going through i just like i said i kept hearing this song in my spirit the whole night i will trust i will trust you know you listen to that so it's an awesome song and uh that song has brought me through a lot but I, I, I told my wife, I think in early in the morning in the closet, she was asking how I was feeling. And I'll just share a little bit about how I was feeling. But I said, but God, you know, but I always know when God is really ready to do something, when God is planning, when God has anointed us to share something very specific, that the enemy always attacks. Always, without fail. All, listen, to do the stuff that we do, it's not easy. We pay a price for this stuff. Because we've warned against an, an immortal being that, what, that, that, guess what, is afraid of our mortality. Mm-hmm. Afraid of who you are in Christ. Go ahead. I have a question. Mm-hmm. <coughs> so, all right, so with me, I feel like I have, like, three phases. Like, I have, like, sleep, sleep. Then I have like up sleep, then I have like awake. And so it seems like when I'm in between that up sleep part, like I'm fully aware and I'm f- like, I don't just like this happened a couple nights ago. Like I remember being asleep. Then I remember waking up slightly, but not, um, not being up to where like, I'm just like, moving but being up to where like i'm fully sound of like my room and then i remember i just started hearing like music and so when i started like hearing that like i automatically knew because like i guess like in that moment i thought i was up but i also know that when like when i started hearing like when i started hearing stuff that that's how i know like okay i'm not as fully up as i think i'm up and so as soon as so i just like forced myself like up officially and I just like looked around. Now, are you actually awake or are you actually asleep? But see, that's the thing. Like, it feels like I'm awake because it's like that in between state. Yeah, because I'm like yeah. I I'm well aware. Yeah. Of like. That's like, how like, it is in the yeah. spirit. Because I was like I, I, was, I, I it was weird because I'm like I don't know I, when this specific moment. I don't know. I guess it's because I'm I'm so aware of what's going on. It feels like I'm actually up. Like I can see things. Like mm-hmm. of course, like this last time, I was just like hearing just music, um, but it didn't sound like it sounded like music of something trying to mess with me. Mm-hmm. So I forced myself up just to see if I would like hear it or see mm-hmm. if it may have been the neighbors or something like that. But I didn't yeah. really, I didn't hear anything after that. So I ended up like staying up for a bit. They end up like falling back asleep. But I know, like, times before, like, I would, um, like, this time it was hard to tell if it was the spirit or not. Because I remember when things are the spirit, I can usually hear them directly, like, in my ear. And I remember there was one time where I heard, um, I was sleeping in bed, 
um, my bed is facing this way. I heard footsteps coming this way, and then something whispered in my ear or something. Mm-hmm. And then I woke up. And another time I was sleeping in my bed, and, like, in the spirit realm, I couldn't tell if this was, like, the spirit realm or a dream. I feel like it was maybe a mixture of both, but I heard and seen something. Like, I couldn't, I don't know, it was weird. I couldn't, like, physically see the, um, behind my wall you know how my wall is on this side of like my bed Mm -hmm. i couldn't see but i knew something was coming up the stairs Mm -hmm. and i knew that they were um coming to my bed and they were like um putting their hand over my over my covers Mm -hmm. and so i and and but out of nowhere i remember grabbing i had a knife under my pillowcase for some reason not naturally but i had Mm -hmm. like a knife under my pillow and so I remember like pulling it out, and I was waiting for them to pull. Cause I, I knew I knew what they were going to do. I knew they were going to pull the sheet back at some point. So that, and I knew that they didn't know that I had a knife. So I was like ready for them to pull the, the sheet back so I can like stab them up. But then I was like I couldn't tell if that was real life, or if it was like in the spirit realm. That could have been a dream or a mixture of both. Yeah. But the thing is, is in those situations, our body is asleep, but our spirit man doesn't sleep. Mm-hmm. I mean, there's been times just not too long ago, uh, I, I believe I shared it here, where I was sleeping, I was hearing this song. I was hearing he- heaven singing the song. It was just so beautiful. I was just so amazed. And I just, I was up all night just worshiping and, and, and hearing this beautiful song. You know, the one that um, I asked you guys to sing a little while back. Mm-hmm. And, um, so those things happen, but that's to let us know that we're, we're mortal beings, but there is a supernatural aspect to us that sometimes we tap into, you know, by the Holy Spirit, or sometimes God just, I'm talk, speaking as believers, that God just open us up to so that we can hear, so we can see. And there's sometimes where our spirit man, because we're con- our spirit man is connected to the Holy Ghost, where something is in the spirit realm ready to attack us, then the, our spirit will hear it and see it and know it even though we're still asleep and it doesn't we don't know whether it's a dream or not or whether it's happening for real or not but a lot of things are happening in the realm of the spirit and that's why you guys are being prepared so when those things are happening you know what to do mm-hmm. yeah so i would just you know ask the holy spirit to to let you know like what is this because okay um i mean i can't say for sure uh it, it could be a dream it could be that you're you know in the spirit in another dimension it, 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 i mean it could be a myriad of things right. he knows he okay knows. so but it does sound like you were um experiencing something in the spirit yeah because it's, w- it's crazy because like it wasn't sleep paralysis i was c- clearly like yeah moved i was like but i experienced those things a lot where i'm just I'm aware, but yeah. it feels like I'm asleep, but I'm aware. I'm right. And yeah. that's uh, normally you are very aware mm-hmm. and those things happen. And that's why I've shared in the past that, you know, there's times where the Lord will take me different places and I'm like walking down a street or something and I'm oh, totally aware. Like, where am I? Like, mm-hmm. I know I'm not dreaming. Like, this is different from a dream. Yeah. And I'll talk to people. I had actually uh, had a uh, and uh, what was it uh, the other d- the other night I was actually ministering to somebody and telling them that salvation leads to eternal life and so you know but it's it's the Lord he just wherever he wants to take us you know during that time you know I- if we're willing to to minister and you know do whatever he wants us to do right gotcha. so right and and you can even be aware while you're wide awoke. I can't tell you how many times I'm preaching, and I just stop and look. I don't see anything with my eyes, but I know something is there. Just like uh, the, I think it was the first Bible study you went to when we was uh, had rented the space from the storage unit place. Mm-hmm. And so I was praying with Tina, and I and I I was rebuking stuff and prophesying to her. Then I stopped and looked and said, "I rebuke you in Jesus' name." She could see in the spirit. I can't. She said, oh, you saw it too? So you could be. Yeah, you were actually pointing at it. Right. And rebuking it. Mm -hmm. So you could be. The demon. Right. Mm -hmm. So you could be king to something without actually. Why? Why you're awake, fully awake, 
kings, but a lot of times we just ignore it. Yeah. Just ignore it. For instance, the other day I was in the bathroom and I saw something out of out of my peripherals, out of the corner of my eyes, by my wife lamp next to the bed. And I look, it was her. Yeah, but then I had the thought, how many times did I see something out of the peripheral move and I looked, nothing was there. And I just passed it off. Mm-hmm. Which is telling I saw something. Yeah. But because when I looked, I didn't see anything, I'd have paid it no mind. But when I looked, because it was my wife that time, I saw her. What's the difference? Yeah. That's how it, it started for me as well when I was younger. I, I would think that I saw something, but then when I would look, it wasn't really there. Or I would be asleep and in that in-between state. And I just know I see a spider coming down right for me. And I mean, I, at that point, wake up and I am out of the bed looking for this thing and it's nowhere to be found. Right. Be- because that's, 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 uh, that's witchcraft. Right. It was a lot of that before I got <laughs> saved. <Right. laughs> mm. Really tormenting, but yeah. But God has taken us from mortal back to immortality. In 1 Corinthians 5 1, it says, For we know that. In our earthly home of this tabernacle were desired, we have a building of God, a house not made with hands, eternal in, hev- in the heavens. For in this we groan, earnestly desiring to be clothed upon with our houses which is from heaven. If so be that being clothed, we shall, be not, we shall not be found naked. For we that are in this... See, those... If you hear about people in hell they don't have anything on they have been clothed they haven't been clothed they're naked and a lot of them skeletons and all that kind of stuff but we will be clothed with a body that came comes from heaven then it says here that for that we are in this tabernacles do groan in this tabernacle we do groan being burdened not for that we would be unclothed but clothed upon that mortality which is liable to death might be swallowed up of life when we're groaning and moaning really what we're desiring and longing for is life is life then it says this now that he have wrought us for the self same thing as God. He that brought us for the self same thing as God. What? Life. Who also have given unto us eternal uh, the earnestness of the spirit. The earnestness is like when you buy in the house and you gotta put down earnest money. That's the that's as a guarantee. The Holy Spirit is our guarantee for this new house, for this heavenly house, for this Amen. eternal life. Then it says here that um Therefore, verse 6, we are always confident knowing that once we are at home in the body, we are absent from the Lord. For we walk, so in this body, we with him in spirit, but in our mortality, we're not in heaven. Even though he might take our spirit man and take us to heaven, give us a glimpse of heaven, but that's why our body grown, we long for that. When something bad happened, you say, mm. your body is saying, man, one day soon, I won't ever have to experience this again. Then it says here, um, for we walk by faith, not by sight. We are confident, I say, and willing rather to be absent from the body and to be present with the Lord. Wherefore we labor, that whether present or absent, we may be accepted of him. So that's what we have to understand. In our mortality, whether we're here or we not here or no longer here, we're accepted of him. Just like we talked about last week, our mortality has a time. When we were born, the time when we were conceived, because that's where life starts, the time starts ticking, 
and there's a day for our, the, us to shed this body. So what we would have, what we had done, the will of God, when we, by the time we pass, will we fulfill our purpose and calling? All of us that are alive right now and have that opportunity to do that before eternal life comes, before we shed this body. We can reach as many people as God wants us to. And don't think we don't have enough time because I gave my life to the Lord when I was late. No. He redeems the time for his own namesake. Amen. So while we're in this mortal realm, this mortal body, this mortal world, we have a work to do. Because we will shed this mortality. And we will live an eternal life. So why do we pay so much attention to what is temporal and not enough attention to what that which is eternal? Somebody get us mad, we hold on to that thing. Hurt our feelings, we hold on to that thing. You know, negative stuff happens, we hold on to that thing. I understand we we human, we mortals. It's going to hurt. But we have to we have to be getting to be swift with this to say, you know what, Lord, I forgive them. Lord, help them. Because I know that one day their mortality will be shed and it will be death. But what were, where will they be after they leave the mortal body? That's what we need to think about. And I believe if we think about that, we'll be less offended and more prone to pray for people. Less hurt. Less anger. Angry. Less more unforgiving. I mean, less unforgiving and more prone to pray for people. See, we must shed our carnal or mortal mind in order to step into the mind of or the immortal mindset. That, does that make sense? Yes. That's why we can't think about I will, I will, I will, I will, because that will always lead back to mortal death. But if we say thy will, thy will, thy will, thy will, that will always lead to immortal life. See, first, before these, we shed these bodies, we got to shed the carnal mind to take all carnality and put on the mind of Christ. Let the mind that was in Christ Jesus be in you also. Are y'all listening to me? Are the kids listening to me? This is for everybody. So, to be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord. Oh, how I long to be in your presence, Father. But I'm not in a rush. Because I want to finish the work that I'm here to do. I want to be here to the rapture, not because I don't want to die. I want to be here to the rapture because I want to do as much as I possibly can before he comes. I want to win as many souls as I possibly can before he comes. I want to bring as many people closer to Jesus as I possibly can before he comes. I want the world to know as many as possible that Jesus is alive before he comes. Then it says here, verse 9, Wherefore we labor. My wife and I, we labor, and that's what we all have to do. We labor that whether we be present or absent, we may be accepted of him. What did, what did the Lord tell me? Prepare your brother for my return. What does that mean? Not that look up to the sky because he's coming. Be busy doing what he called you to do. But he said, blessed are those who found so doing when I return. Why? So we can be accepted of him. To hear, well done, thou good and faithful servant. We got to stop letting things interfere with God's purpose and will for our lives. Whether it's a dude, whether it's a girl, whether it's money, whether it's, uh, you know, whatever it is, a job, no matter. Nothing will come between. Nothing will separate me from my Lord, from my purpose. Yeah, and it's not all going to be the same mm -hmm. either. Just like, you know, our night that I, you know, explained is not going to be everybody's night um you know the lord has given me a task to make sure that i watch over my husband and that's how i'm a help meet to him 
in that area. There's diff different areas that I'm a help meet to him. But in that area in particular, he's given me the gift to be able to see what's going on and I understand what comes up against him. Because the Bible says, if you, if, you if you smite the shepherd, the sheep will scatter. So I understand what comes up against him. So I need to be in my seat so that I can make sure that I'm helping him in that area. That he doesn't have to be up all night praying and, you know, trying to comfort himself or seek the Holy Spirit to comfort him. But to, to do my part to help comfort him so that he can get the little bit of rest that he did get. <laughs> Right, you know, are. so um, mm -hmm. so it's not all going to be the same. It's not all going to look the same. But what we're saying is whatever the Lord has given you to do, be willing to do it. Be be glad and thankful. Like, you know, I know initially I wasn't and I was very ungrateful for the gifts that he had given me and I didn't want it. I thought it was horrible. It's like, what is this? I just want to be a girly girl. I don't want to be fighting battles and rebuking demons. Like, that's not girly, you know. But I, that was that was that I want to do this and right. I want to do that. And but I it's don't, womanly. And I don't want to be rebuking and fighting demons. I don't want to do that. But that is who I am. As a king and a priest, the authority that he's given me, Oh, you know, over the region he's given me, the authority he's given me in our household to help, like I said, to help my husband. So, you know, we ought to receive who we are in, in the sphere that he's he's placed us, the sphere that he's given us. Amen. Take authority in your home, in your apartments, in your bedrooms. Take authority. Don't just let the enemy come in and run ruckshot and do what he wants. Yeah. Because you might not say, devil, you can do it, but your absence of standing in opposition denotes permission. Yeah. And now, like I said, I totally forgot about that. Right. You know, whereas it, it, in the beginning, it was like, oh, my God, what's happening? Oh, my God. You know, but now it's normal. It's like, okay, I'm putting these shoes on and I got to tie them. It's, it's that normal now because this is normal. Things in the spirit is normal. It's happening whether right. we realize it or not, whether you can see it or not. Whether you want to ignore it or not. Yeah. Verse 10, for we must all appear before the judgment seat of Christ that everyone may receive the things done <laughs> in his body. We're going to stand before Christ as believers and receive the rewards for what we've done while we was alive in these mortal bodies. Mm -hmm. Amen. According to the things that we have done, whether it be good or bad. So to us in Christ, we'll receive a reward that we've done in our bodies. You know, those who really walk with Jesus, love Jesus, you know, live for Jesus. According to the good, we'll get rewarded for the good that we've done. But those who do not walk with Jesus, do not accept Jesus, or act like they walk with Jesus and just call themselves a Christian, will receive of the reward for the evil things, the bad things. You know, uh, the first lady of the church, you know, got a little click and spreading discord among the sisters. She'll be judged for that. So let us all, while we are in mortality, while we are living and while we are alive in this flesh, let us do those things that will be pleasing to the Father. Let us dedicate our heart and our mind to the Lord Jesus. Let him use us to bring millions of people to him while we're here. Amen. Amen. Man. We got, we, we the, look, Holy Spirit, have your way. I thought we were going to be finished just today. But, um, We'll pick it up next week. But I just got a few more scriptures to share. Romans 6, 12. Let not sin therefore reign in your mortal bodies. Let Jesus reign over our bodies. Don't let it in our bodies. Don't let sin reign in our mortal body. That we should obey the lust thereof, the desires of the flesh. Sin reigning. Remember, sin is just not an action. Uh, action can't reign. Sin is an entity. 
So don't let an entity reign in your mortal bodies that you should obey. How do you obey an act or a deed? No, you obey a voice. You obey an entity. You obey a being to obey it in the lust thereof. Don't let sin reign in our mortal bodies. Rome, uh, Romans 2, 7. To them who by patient continuance and well-doing seek for glory and honor and immortality, eternal life. So continue to walk in a pace and wait for the Lord. Keep doing well. Keep doing what he wants you to do. And you, and you will receive glory and honor and eternal life and immortality. Romans 8, 11. But if the spirit of him that rose Jesus from the dead dwells in you, he that raised up Jesus from the dead shall also quicken your mortal bodies by him, by his spirit that dwells in you. So let his spirit dwell in you. Let the Holy Spirit reign in you, not any other spirit. Yeah. Reign in your mortal body. Amen. Amen. First Corinthians 15, verse 52. First Corinthians 15, 53. In a moment, in the twinkling of an eye at the last trump, for the trump shall sound and the dead shall be raised incorruptible. And we shall be charged or changed. And we shall be changed. For this corruptible must put on incorruptible. And this mortal must put on immortality. That's the rapture. See, see, if we were to pass on before the rapture, our bodies were going to the ground and would be corrupted. I mean, it'll be, it'll, it'll be, um, uh, our body would decompose in the ground. But our soul will go up to heaven and our spirit will return to God. So our soul will be clothed with a robe in heaven. But when the rapture comes, even though people have passed on before the rapture, the Bible says in First Thessalonians, and we'll get to that next week, that the dead in Christ shall rise first, so the bodies of the, those who have died in Christ shall rise and shoot up into the sky. And us who remain will be caught up with them and in the process of the bodies that come out of the grave into the, into the clouds to meet the Lord. And it's at the same time, we who are alive and remain will be brought up into the clouds with the Lord. And in the process and during that time, at the same time, the corruptible will put on incorruption. And the mortal will put on immortality. So by the time we hit the cloud where Jesus is, we'll be immortals. And by the time the bodies that come out of the grave to meet the souls with Jesus in the cloud, that mortal corrupted body will become uncorrupted or incorrupted and will put on their mortality and the person will be joined with their body. And that body, that mortality will put on immortality. Mortality will be changed back to immortality. Back to God's original design for man. Oh, we groan in these bodies. And we are burdened and heavy laden. That's why Jesus said, come unto me and you'll find rest for your soul. While we're in these mortal bodies, if we come to him, we'll find rest. We'll find peace for our souls. Stop going through turmoil, even though we're in these mortal bodies. But he's here with us. Let's go to him. Let's acknowledge him. Lord, I feel so bad, but I know you're here. And he will show up like he showed up for me when I was in so much turmoil when my mom died. And I cried and I cried and I cried. And he came into the room twice. Even just not too long, when we, my wife and I were just going through all this turmoil. All kind of things was done and said about it. But the Lord, he came and comforted us. He, no matter what, he is with you. Even those who may have walked away from Jesus, even those who may be in sin, he's right there. 
All you have to do is acknowledge him. All you have to do is call upon him. All you have to do is cry out to him. And he said, those who call upon the Lord shall be saved. Amen. And thus we're already in him. He will never leave us nor forsake us. In other words, he's here with you. You hear me, little sis? He's here with you all the time. You're never alone. Never. He just wants you to learn his presence. So we're gonna we'll we'll we'll, we'll pick up and finish this next week. Amen. Immortality is only found in Christ. It was lost in the first Adam and given back to us in the last Adam. Jesus is the last Adam according to the word of God. Adam fell. Jesus rose. Amen. Amen. And because we fell in Adam, we rise in Christ Jesus. Ain't that good, Alex? We rise in Christ. This mortal will put on immortality. These mortals. Look around. Look around at each other. Wait till we see the immortal body of the person that we just looked at. When we get caught up. Like my wife said, the Lord gave her a glimpse of her glorified body. I didn't recognize myself. I was like, who is that? Yeah. Wait a minute. Is that me? <laughs> it looked like me, but then it didn't look like me. I know that got to be God because I can't imagine her more beautiful than she is now. Ew. That's a pass of my understanding. That's too that's too high, too lofty, too wonderful for me to but even perceive. You know, it's just so wonderful because for years he'd been, you know, he he would say like I wish you would you could see yourself the way the Lord is showing me you. And I was like, "Well, I can't." So, what do you want me to do about it? And you know, that was really a cry in my heart, like, "Lord, I want to see you. I want to see me the way you see me." And um a couple of years ago, I had that glimpse. I saw myself and I was like, how am I looking at myself? And we were in the garden in heaven and I had on this beautiful dress and it, it, it was bright. And, and like I said, my hair was like moving. It was alive. And I looked younger than I am now. And you must look 10 years old. <laughs> no. <laughs> Yeah, but I, I, you know, I looked young. I, I, I can't even, brighter and just, I, I, like I said, I couldn't, I didn't even recognize myself at first. And then literally as I was coming out of the vision, the perspective was changing and I saw that I was actually, it was Jesus looking at me as I was walking ahead of him and motioning for him, come on, Jesus, let's go. Listen, we're going this way. And I just, oh my gosh, like I couldn't believe that. Like mm -hmm. he answered my desire, my prayer. Right. And so that was really awesome. She she was able to see him herself through his eyes. All of you guys ask the Lord that because we get so caught up in what we see is based on what the world says, but not the reality of what he sees. Amen. And I just want to tell a quick little story. When she said how she looked younger than she is. You know, um, so I got her about 12 years, right? And so she looks, I got her about 12 years, but she looks 15 years younger than she is. So I told my wife, because she still has a high school sweatshirt. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> like, it's the best. They don't make sweatshirts like they that sure anymore. Don't. That, thing is, <laughs> that thing is thick as this carpet. <laughs> So I said, I said, where you going with that sweatshirt on? She said, we're going out, aren't we? It's so my advanced dance <laughs> high school sweatshirt. That's my name, Tina. <laughs> I said, I'm like, look, people ain't going to mistake me for a pedophile. <laughs> You're going to have to go take that off. Because she, she put on a baseball cap. There's certain things she can look like a, like she's like a teenager or something. You know, they, they, they can't see her gray and all that stuff. <laughs> So they like look at me all funny. I'm like, look, you come over if you want to. We're gonna be <laughs> rumbling because I ain't what you think. It ain't, it ain't happening. 
<laughs> but uh, just wanted to throw that in. It was it's just funny because we cracked up about it. I was like, Man, you got to take that sweatshirt off. <laughs> and you got to retire that thing. I don't even feel right laying next to you in the bed with your high school <laughs> sweatshirt on. <laughs> anyway, anyway. Mm-hmm. You know, anybody need prayer? Anybody online need prayer? If you do, just let us know online. If you hear anybody, just, you know, put your hands up and, and we'll pray for you. Amen. 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 You guys can come stand right here. Amen. Let brotherly love continue. Amen. Lord loves that when we hug each other and we acknowledge each other. Because he, he's hugging us and acknowledging us. You coming up for prayer too? Oh no, just those who want prayer. But you can stay up there just to, you know, to just in case. Thank you, Lord. Anything in particular you want prayer for? Or is it private? You need to whisper it. Amen. The Bible said, and do a hardship like a good soldier, because let me tell you what happened with me. I, I've been through so much, so much in my life. And when one day God took me to uh, Genesis when, when Jacob was wrestling with God, and, and God said, let go, and he said, no, I won't let go until you bless me. He even knocked his hip out of the joint, but he still wouldn't let him go, and the day was breaking. He was like, you got to let me go. Then he said, I won't let you go until you bless me. No matter how much pain he was in, no matter what he was going through, he would not let go of God. So God blessed him. And, of course, the scripture calls him the angel of the Lord. But when you see the angel of the Lord is referring, for, referring to Jesus before he came into the earth, the Christ, before he was manifest in the flesh. So that's what he wrestled with. And even when you read the Old Testament, when it says, the word of the Lord came unto me, saying, no, actually, word, no word actually come, you know, hop in and just start talking to you. They were talking about the Lord. He is the word of God. The word of God came unto me saying, Jesus came to them and told them what to say, told them what to do. So I said that because, you know, we, we've all been through so much. And the devil told God, they're going to let you go. They're going to they gonna forsake you. They're going to leave you. And so the enemy starts fighting and fighting and fighting. And you're wrestling with these demons. You're fighting these demons. Because the Bible said we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but principalities, powers, spiritual wickedness in this world, rulers of darkness in high places. Right? But I want to show you something. That no matter what was going on in your life, no matter what sin, no matter what torture, you held on to God. And if you held on to God and prevailed with God, no demon, no fallen angel, Satan himself has got no place to be able to in any way conquer you in any shape, form, or fashion because you won with God. When God would say, you know, you get thoughts like, well, you just just forget about God. He can't help you. Or, or just, 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 just let God go. Just go ahead. Sometimes the Lord will be like, let me go. And you be like, I ain't letting it go with God. Even though I'm messed up, Lord, help me. That's holding on to him. So then the demons come because he knows that he's strengthening you and your faith with him to not let go. So then you're wrestling with God. So then these, de- these demons come. They're trying to get you back. They're trying to war against you. You've already prevailed with God. So they have, no- they have nothing for you. So all you need to do is just know who you are and the authority that you have in you and the power of Christ that's alive in you to say it'll get to the point where you won't even have to wrestle and fight. Like my wife said, rebuke you in Jesus' name, be gone. And they shoot something at you. And and, and, and not ironically, but uh, consequentially, before we, we pray every night before we go to bed, pray for all you guys and all that stuff, but I pray a uh, uh, impenetrable force field around us. 
So she praying in the spirit, the enemy trying to hit us with something. Whew, we'll hit the fourth seal. So God is training you because you are a soldier. My wife, talk to my wife, I'm telling you. She, she, she is a valuable asset to, to you, I'm telling you. Talk to my wife. Huh? Your job's okay, good, 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 good. Because you're being prepared and tripping. You've been, you've been like her. You, you've been thrown into the midst of the battle. Yeah. Yeah. I was Be- gonna say. Oh, sorry. Go well, ahead. I was gonna say, and and if you couldn't be there, you wouldn't be there. You are already a champion. He's just trained. He's OJT. He's we almost call it uh, uh, OJ OJB. On the job battle. <laughs> that yeah. you're learning in the process. Go ahead. Yeah, it's. I think what it is is because it's something that's new to us. So it's like this has to be wrong. Something is wrong, right? No, it's it's actually this is natural. Um, you know, we've been told of this fairy tale gospel where everything is happy and good and nothing goes wrong when you give your life to Christ. But that's not true. I mean, look at Jesus. Like, he literally was crucified, and then he went to hell. Like, (laughs) he went there for a purpose to to get the keys back, but it wasn't fun. So if we're looking at that, why are we then like, well, why does it feel like I'm in hell? There's a purpose. Mm-hmm. Right. Mm-hmm. right. Amen. Yeah. But yeah. Look, look and you're not Jesus. always. Well, go ahead. I'm you're not ahead. always going to feel his presence, but we have to know that he's with us and he's for us. And just understanding that this is a season. You know, this is a right. season that you're going through that is building your right. faith and it's strengthening you spiritually so that you will get to the point where it's like oh go in jesus name as opposed to you know because it's new so it's right. understandable right and then also jesus said the gates of hell should not prevail against you yeah but that means they're going to attack you the gates of hell will come against you but they, right. not will, they will not prevail right so like i said earlier you sometimes you go through hell to rescue people who's going to hell and to win a soul is a battle. Yeah. So you're going through these battles now, you're in boot camp, going through these skirmishes and these little wars and these little battles to prepare you to win a soul. And to win a soul, what you're doing is defying the, defeating the enemy that's defying their soul. Right. I know one time the Lord told me this about perspective too. Cause like when we're in Christ Jesus, we already won. It's a we're, we're a rigged battle. So this is really just like battle test. This is strength training. So even when you're working out, you feel like you lose. I'm like, oh, my God, this weight is so hard. But the thing is, like, you're winning no matter what. You're getting so stronger. Even when these things happen, they come against you at night or during the day. It's like, have the battle. Like, oh, I already won. So when I'm going into this battle, I'm like, okay, cool. Like, I know you got me. You're not going to let me go down. It may hurt. I may get some bruises. You don't get bruises in the fight. But if you know you're going to win, no matter what. It can't. It's not going to change the outcome. You can only forfeit your winning position. Amen. Yeah. But yeah. guess what? You already overcame darkness, because John wrote. He said uh, to you, little ones, you already overcome the wicked one. Yeah. You already overcome it. When you gave your life to Jesus, and He delivered you. You overcame the wicked one. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. Amen. And for those who are online, y- even though you know. They're being open here. We're not playing it online because we don't want the whole world to know what they're going through. Mm-hmm. Amen. Mm-hmm. So, here's the question for us. You guys have been following this for a while, and you're like, man, I can love this. And you said you're feeling like you're in a good place. Mm-hmm. What is it that you're feeling like you're in a good Yeah, I would just pray against any witchcraft Amen. and that uh, in, the, in the job itself or in that region. Did I somebody on your job do witchcraft that you know of? In the New Age or anything? Okay. Yeah, so just, you know, every day before you go in, bind and rebuke 
every evil spirit, every, all witchcraft in Jesus' name. And, um, yeah, just at, see what the Holy Spirit leads you to right. pray. And, and let the enemy know, how dare you touch me? I'm a child of the Most High God. I am royalty. You have no place in touching me. Yeah. Don't you ever touch me again in Jesus' name. Angels, you have charge concerning me in the name of Jesus. Yeah. Amen. Amen. So, Father, we thank you for this young, precious child of God, Lord. I'm going to let you open up a prayer. Just let you pray. Thank you, Lord. We just thank you for our dear sister, Lord. We thank you for everything that you're equipping her with, you're training her with, Lord. We just speak strength to her body, strength to her mind, Lord, in the name of Jesus. We thank you, Lord, for giving her your mind, Lord. We thank you for giving her your resolve. We thank you. Right now, I just even pray boldness, a boldness, a fire uh, being stirred up in you right now in the mighty name of Jesus to be unrelenting against the, the things of the enemy, to come against, to fight, to war, to um, be more than a conqueror. You've already conquered the enemy in your life uh, through the Holy Spirit. Allow him to help you to conquer the enemy and others now and, and, and help him or uh, allow him to help equip you uh, for what's to come. And so we just cancel every assignment of the enemy against you right now in your home, at your job, right now in the mighty name of Jesus. We bind and rebuke all witchcraft, all divination, all soothsaying, every word curse spoken. It will fall to the ground now and it will not bear forth any fruit in Jesus mighty name. Jesus mighty name. We come against you now in the mighty name of Jesus, Jesus, we thank Lord. you for your hedge of protection around our dear sister. Yes, uh, we give her angels charge over her, and um, we unction them to chase and persecute every evil spirit that would try to even think about coming and um, in her direction. In Jesus' mighty name, we thank you and we love you. Amen. 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 And the other thing is the Bible tells us to keep ourselves pure. Because sin is an open door, and it causes things to linger much longer than they have to. So sanctify yourself unto the Lord. And I'm not saying anything going on. I'm just saying just in case there is, you know, because you now your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost, and the Spirit of the Lord, he lives in you. All right? All right. Amen. 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 What about you?